Hey everybody. So finding music for a YouTube video is hard. Harder than you'd think. Want to use that electronic track you've been listening to for years? Sorry, that's owned by some record label you've never heard of and it's not going to be available till 2085. Want to use some background music you heard in your favorite YouTuber's latest video? Sure, as long as you're willing to pay 25 bucks a month for a stock music subscription. Want to add some tracks from the OST of a game that came out 30 years ago? Uh, that's about a 50-50 depending on how the game publisher's feeling on that particular day. Finding music that won't get your video obliterated or demonetized is more trial and error than anything else, and you never quite know what's going to set off YouTube's detecting systems. And it's not like YouTube themselves make that very easy. But if you've been around the block more than a few times, it's almost a guarantee that you've heard of a site that comes with no such strings attached. Actual royalty-free music for any occasion, which is a lot harder to come by than you'd think. I'm talking, of course, about Kevin McLeod's Incompetech. Welcome back to a brand new season of Caribbean Mini Episodes, the series where I take a look at anything and everything that makes the world a more interesting place. Granted, this year may have already started, but it's not too late to set it off with a bang as we take a journey through the trials and tribulations of Kevin McLeod, the king of royalty free. Let's get started. <laughs> Before we really get into it though, there is one unusual thing I gotta tell you guys. That's right, this kid got a sponsor, and that sponsor is ExpressVPN. Now, I've been making videos for a couple years now. When I first started out, because I was like 15, all my work was done on a public network that was definitely not secure, and had a wide array of content blocks that made doing pretty much anything a hassle. But my ace in the hole was always a VPN. For those of you who don't know, a VPN encrypts your web traffic, not only hiding a lot of your web activity from your ISP, but even allowing you to bypass content blocks based on your network or region, which was a pretty big deal for someone stuck on rural Alaskan public networks. I've pulled a huge variety of VPNs from my bag of tricks over the past few years, some great, some not so great, and I can tell you that ExpressVPN really does seem to know what they're doing. The app is quick and wickedly easy to set up, and you're provided with a ton of customization features and a big old collection of servers to choose from, no matter where you are in the world. If I wanted to make people think I was from the Netherlands, I could definitely do that, although I probably wouldn't. And on top of that, ExpressVPN has apps for just about every platform you could possibly think of, and even some you probably wouldn't. So if you're in the market for a VPN, consider downloading Express using my link in the description below. When you use my link, you get your first three months free, and on top of that, you support the channel. Thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring the video and with that, let's get back into it. As a preface, we gotta talk about the copyright system. The word copyright, along with copyright claimed, copyright infringement, fair use, DMCA, 1978 act, and so on, well, they get tossed around a lot without a lot of background. So I'll give you guys a quick and dirty primer so we're all on the same page. In the United States, copyright law exists essentially to protect the creative work of an individual. If I make a movie and copyright it, and some random dude grabs it and tries to tell everybody they made it, I have the authority to say, no, you didn't get out of my house and be legally in the right. It's a pretty good idea and concept, but once large corporate copyright holders get involved, things start to get rough. To put it simply, copyright protection, well, it just keeps getting longer. Starting at around 14 to 28 years at their inception in the 18th century, copyright periods and protections have been expanded and modified in 1831, 1909, 1976, and 1998 to their current state today, which provides protection lasting anywhere from 70 to 150 years, which I probably don't have to tell you is a lot. Much of this has been due to lobbying by publishers and copyright holder groups, and it's unclear if it'll happen anytime in the near future, but this is the state of things at the moment. <laughs> Personal computers and the internet sort of threw a wrench into everything. Millions of creators suddenly gaining the ability to easily create their own content and spread it rapidly meant that determining if something infringed on an existing copyright was going to be a much harder job. Sites had to introduce policies that ensured copyright material couldn't be spread through their services, and this gave rise to the copyright claiming systems we all know and definitely don't love. 
This posed a particular problem for video makers who wanted background music in their videos. Not everyone wants to try their hand at composing their own original soundtracks, and I can tell you from personal experience that even if you do, it's not exactly the most expedient way to do things. The solution? royalty-free music. If a piece of music is registered under copyright, but its author gives specific permissions that allow it to be used, content creators can make use of it any way they want, as long as they abide by the terms of the composer. It's not public domain, but it's enough to provide independent creators with the supplies they need to create. And for this supply, since the dawn of the internet, there has been great demand. Enter Kevin McLeod. McLeod was born September 1972 in the city of Green Bay, Wisconsin, and he would go on to study music education at the University of Wisconsin-Green Bay. Throughout the 90s, McLeod lived a relatively inconspicuous life, playing music for a wedding band and continuing his studies. He would take a position as a sysadmin working at Wisconsin-based Marathon Communications soon after. But in March 1996, he would first make his presence known online, with the creation of a small independent site at the address Incompetech. Com. The site, at its inception, featured a wide variety of features and information very characteristic of personal sites at the time. In early versions, name databases, encyclopedias of British authors, e-cards, and more graced the front page of the site with very little rhyme or reason. McLeod described the site as a place for him to try out things he was interested in. The name database and his graph paper collection were apparently early hits. But in May of 2000, Incompetech would see a minor update that added an unassuming new feature to the site header. Free MP3s. Using the relatively new MPEG-3 format, Kevin was uploading a series of short original compositions, mostly on piano, along with loops, guitar riffs, and more that were, as the site proudly declared, completely free to use. He noted that, at the time, providing free music was virtually unheard of. What little services that existed almost exclusively offered paid licenses, and although there wasn't yet a good web framework for free music licensing, McLeod had decided to take his chances and begin uploading music that was, for everyone, forever. He released the tracks under his own license, which stipulated users could use the music in any way they pleased, as long as proper attribution was provided. A few select tracks from this era are actually still available on Incompetech today, like 1998's Sovereign. But this was just the beginning. January of 2001 saw an interesting development take place. A small group of American academics, with the support of the Center for Public Domain, founded a nonprofit dedicated to creating and maintaining a series of licenses and standards for media creators in the bold new digital age, to release content that was simultaneously their own, but also was free to use by anyone who abided by some simple guidelines. Creative Commons was established with the goal of providing an alternative to public domain and standard copyright, giving artists a unique license which allowed their work to be distributed, repurposed, and reused in a variety of ways, all depending on the artist's wishes. And this was exactly what Kevin McLeod had been waiting for. He quickly adopted the standard, using the CC by attribution license, as it most closely resembled what he had been doing independently. McLeod hoped the CC standard would help users better understand the system, and continued to make music throughout the rest of the early 2000s under this license. Access to assets, McLeod would later say, is how we make the world better. And his work reflected this, emphasizing quick and easy access to music to accelerate the work of independent creators. The site broke the 100,000 visitor mark in March 2003, and by 2005, McLeod's music, along with his graph paper, had begun to take front seat on the homepage of Incompetech. Throughout the early 2000s, his music began to take on more complex characteristics, evolving from simple loops around the turn of the millennium to electronica, silent film scores, jazz, and far more. And it was around this time that an entirely new world of content creation would begin to explode, and it would need music just as much as everyone else, if not more.
In February of 2005, three former PayPal employees joined together to form a small-scale video streaming startup, tentatively called YouTube, a site where users were strongly encouraged to broadcast themselves. A site like YouTube hadn't really been seen before, at least not in a form that was easily accessible to internet users. It's easy to take something like YouTube for granted since, according to my analytics, the majority of people watching right now, me included, haven't really been alive long enough to experience their formative years without it. But it's important not to understate how much YouTube changed independent video production. What was before done largely on a case-by-case -case basis, with users creating videos on their own and either sharing it person to person or uploading it on their own personal site, now had a centralized hub that not only made uploading your content easy, it made it fun. Long story short, people were making videos, and they were making them quick and cheap. Music, on the whole, is not quick and cheap. But as we've discussed before, there are exceptions. YouTube was where the music of Incompetech would truly take off. While early YouTube might have been a little lax in regards to music copyrights, it quickly clamped down on potential offenses, leading YouTubers to search for places they could quickly find music that wouldn't get their machinimas, let's plays, and skits taken down. And a good bit of the time, Incompetech was that place. Bit by bit, the music of Kevin McLeod crept its way into the DNA of the independent YouTube video. While initially confined to the realms of short skits and occasionally machinimas, these tracks would eventually end up in a lot of places you wouldn't expect. Tracks from Incompetech can be found in videos as old as 2006, if not earlier, and the more they spread, the more they became synonymous with video production. Where YouTube creators went, the site's music would follow. McLeod himself would create a YouTube channel in 2007, where he'd post informal release videos for new tracks uploaded to the site. And as the first decade of the new millennium crept on, more and more YouTube users would use, abuse, and bear witness to these royalty-free touchstones, whether they were aware of them or not. Users who were online during their formative years often remember these pieces as the music of their childhood, featuring prominently in the content of pretty much every YouTuber if you looked hard enough. Many Kevin McLeod tracks would even become ingrained in the individual branding of a YouTuber. Minecraft Redstone and Command Engineer Sethbling, along with Yogg's cast member Nilsi, famously used Cypher as an intro and outro track respectively. Countless trolling channels made heavy use of songs like Scheming Weasel, and horror countdown YouTubers like Chills played the hell out of tracks like Ice Demon in just about every video they ever published. And this continued for over a decade and a half. At this point, Incompetech music has become so ingrained in the collective consciousness of anyone who's ever seen a YouTube video that I can safely say, if you're watching this video right now, you've heard at least one, even if you didn't know it. It's just that ubiquitous. It eventually got to a point that individual tracks became identifiable and even infamous, which becomes all the more impressive when you realize that we're talking about short, instrumental, royalty-free pieces that had always just been meant to accompany whatever they were needed for. Even if you don't recognize the names Sneaky Snitch or Monkeys Spinning Monkeys, look them up and give them a listen and you'll know what I'm talking about. Any new YouTuber deciding to make videos for the first time will almost certainly be aware of the site and its resources. It's sort of become the go-to for anyone who wants quick access to video music. When I first started making content, it was certainly my go-to, and it featured prominently in the 25-minute unedited Minecraft PvP video that constituted one of my first official uploads back around 2015. You won't find this, by the way, I've completely obliterated it from the internet. And I continue to use the sites, although I've branched out quite a lot musically and even make a lot of my own, Incompetech is still one of my go-tos for music sources. In fact, you're listening to music from the site right now, and you have been for this entire video. In 2016, McLeod made all of his music available in YouTube's built-in music library, making it even easier to load up some royalty-free tunes and get a video rolling. It's genuinely difficult to think of any single individual who's had as much of an impact on the landscape of YouTube and internet content creation as a whole as Kevin McLeod. He helped build the soundtrack for the youth of an entire generation, even if he had no idea it would become such when he first started out. 
McLeod's music has, of course, had major success in places other than the internet as well. Video games, independent films both good and bad, NASA space station broadcasts, public events, school projects, so on and so forth. He has close to 5,000 independent IMDb credits, and that's just those projects that have actually bothered to have an IMDb page. As sounds on TikTok, his tracks have accumulated literal hundreds of billions of listens in just a few short years. I'm not kidding when I say that it's believed Kevin MacLeod has become one of the most listened to artists in human history in just the past two decades. And it's not due to huge advertising budgets or unique marketing campaigns, just a single individual making music that's for everybody no strings attached. And it's made so much more interesting by the fact that he had only really set out in the beginning to try out a few things on an independent website. Kevin McLeod continues uploading to Incompetech to this day, with his most recent track being released just a few months ago at the time of this writing. And in doing so, he continues to perpetuate the internet's creative ecosystem in his own unique way. The nature of truly royalty-free music is inherently suited to the interconnected nature of the internet. It's meant to be shared, to be reused and redone. It's about the joy of creation, not the potential profits you can reap from it. And although it may not be the most commonly accepted form of creation, sometimes that's just what you need. Before we get out of here, I'd like to give a special thanks to Kevin McLeod himself for agreeing to answer a few questions of mine. It was super useful in the production and research of this video. I did tell you where you can find him, but considering you've watched this video, I'm guessing you already know. Stay tuned for the next season of mini-episodes, have a great day, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>